I'm here to talk about the political persecution and the vindictive victimization of my father, Mr. Sanjeev Bhatt, who is an ex-IPS officer, an Indian police service officer, a dissenter, a whistleblower, but most importantly, he is the sole surviving witness to the state's complicit role and function in the 2002 mass genocide of Muslims in the state of Gujarat. 2002 perhaps marked one of the darkest phases in the history of India. Thousands of Muslims, men, women, and children were systematically targeted and were massacred with exceptional brutality and coordination in the state of Gujarat. All of this was done to fuel the political ambition of one individual. His thirst for power did not quench then and will not quench till any individual who could perhaps stand up against him, question him, or could unmask his heinous crimes in the court of law or in the public forum is put behind bars or is silenced once and for all. The man who I'm talking about is Mr. Narendra Modi, the then Chief Minister of Gujarat, the now Prime Minister of India. The years following the 2002 genocide in Gujarat witnessed numerous extrajudicial killings and fake encounters in the state of Gujarat of Muslims all under the pretext of protecting the then Chief Minister of Gujarat. In 2009, a court-appointed investigative commission was set up to look into the state's complicit role and function in the 2002 riots. While all the other officials either fiend amnesia or looked the other way, or succumbed under political pressure and refused to depose before the commission, my father was the only man who came forward courageously and truthfully deposed before the commission, knowing very well the dire circumstances this decision would garner from the present government. In 2011, my father submitted a sworn affidavit in the Supreme Court of India, putting forward incriminating evidence connecting Narendra Modi and Amit Shah directly to the 2002 Gujarat riots, exposing their link in the various extrajudicial killings, the assassination of the then Home Minister of the State of Gujarat, Harin Pandya, who had secretly started deposing before an independent committee regarding Narendra Modi's role in the 2002 riots. A few weeks after word of him deposing before a secret committee was leaked, he was found murdered in his own car. My father's testimony before the Supreme Court and various other commissions also shed light on the colluded nature of the SIT, the very investigative committee which was set up to investigate the state and the state officials that it was supposed to be impartially looking into. The years following 2002 saw vindictive victimization of my father and my family. The very morning my father submitted the affidavit in court, that same evening he was suspended from duty. As Narendra Modi and the BJP rose in power within the political arena, our vindictive victimization also increased parallelly. In 2014, when Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of India, a few weeks following his election, his being elected into office, my father was dismissed from duty under frivolous grounds of unauthorized absence from duty. An absence which was courtesy him deposing before the commission to his obligation, legal and moral, to depose before these commissions to shed light into the complicit nature of the state in the 2002 riots. Ever since 2011, more so after 2014, the family has been hounded by people associated with the RSS, the VHP, be it death threats, be it our phones being tapped 24-7, or us being followed wherever we go, the family has been constantly hounded. All means have been tried to suppress my father's voice and to bury his resolve to fight this regime, to be the voice of all the thousands of victims who suffered at the hands of this regime. In 2018, a few months before the general elections, Mrs. Zakia Jafri submitted, submitted an affidavit into the Supreme Court seeking for a reinvestigation of Narendra Modi's role in the state riots, 2002 riots. In July, my, now please bear in mind, my father is the sole surviving witness to this complicity. He is the sole surviving witness in Mrs. Ja, Mrs. Zakia Jafri's petition. 
In July 2018, the state withdrew our security, a security which the Supreme Court of India, after having conducted a survey of threat on the family, had directly directed the state to protect the family by giving them a Y category security, which is a very high level security. The state in July 2018 removed our security cover without giving any intimation or without giving any reason. In August 2018, while the family was still in the house, they came and they bulldozed our house and broke it down. In September, 5th of September 2018, they came and they took away my father in the wee hours of the morning to question him in a 30-year-old dormant case, a case which had been investigated and had been stayed by the Supreme Court, only and only to finally tie the last link that can perhaps link Narendra Modi to the 2002 riots. Ever since September 2018, it has been 15 months and my father has been languishing in jail his only crime that he did not buckle under any political pressure, that he dared to stand up against this political regime, and that he dared to fight for the thousands who were victimized by this politics of hate and violence. Since September 2018, we have been running from pillar to post within the judiciary to seek for a fair trial, to seek for justice. Either the judges recuse themselves from hearing the case or would just not take it before their bench under immense political pressure. In June 2019, a lower court, a lower sessions court in India, sentenced my father to life imprisonment for an alleged case of custodial death. Now let me shed some light into this case of custodial death. The deceased was never arrested by my father. This is an incident of 1990, of the year 1990, when 133 rioters were arrested by a local police in a district in Gujarat. The deceased was part of the contingent of those 133 rioters who were burning Muslim houses and who were trying to destroy mosques after the demolition of the Babri Masjid. The deceased was never in the custody of my father. The deceased was never arrested by my father. The deceased died 18 days after being out of police custody. All of his forensic reports, all of his medical reports, his histopathological reports, all of them say that there is absolutely no, inter absolutely no indication of internal or external injuries, that there are no indications of any internal or ex external trauma or grievances, that this death is not death by torture. Yet, without taking any of these evidences in cognizance, without letting us call in a single defense witness, without letting us cross-examine any prosecution witness, the lower sessions court in the state of Gujarat convicted my father for a crime he did not commit and sentenced him to life imprisonment. There cannot be a more blatant example of vindictive victimization by this regime to silence any voice that can perhaps tie them to the heinous crimes that they have committed. For years now, this regime has been systematically orchestrating crimes of hate, violence, and have been getting away with it. The entire system, the four pillars of our democracy, at this point in time are completely subverted and have collapsed. It is now more than ever that all the people who have, at great personal and professional cost, have defended all of these victims it is now more than ever that all of these people who have relentlessly been the voice and who have defended all of these victims of hate and violence who are now being politically persecuted should be defended. It is extremely important that now when the defenders are being victimized that we stand by them and we defend the defenders. I know a lot of people say that yet yeah, it is happening in India but we are in a different country. It is no more about countries or no more about boundaries. It becomes our moral responsibility as concerned and aware citizens of the world that when we see signs of fascism re in the world, that we call it out, that we raise our voices and we try to curb it, lest we let history repeat itself. It is no more about my country or yours. 
It is about justice. It is about basic civil liberty. It is about basic civil liberties and it is about basic human rights. Thank you.